Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for a new Game Maker series. I thought about the project a little bit I recently started and I finally came to a conclusion what I want to do. Since I have a much clearer picture of what I want to accomplish, I decided that I'm gonna to revamp the series and therefore start fresh. I wanted to do a few more practical things and today we're gonna dive right into the making of a survival adventure, RPG, thingy-majingy. What we want to accomplish is player movement, we want to have a couple of objects in the world. For the time being we're not gonna spawn anything automatically, but that's gonna come. Boring stuff like camera movement and world generation we're gonna leave out in the beginning and take care of later on. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive right into the making of our own game. Every game in Game Maker of course needs a room. Now I deleted my room so I have to create a new one and we're gonna rename this. I'm gonna rename this to room main for the time being. What we want to do is set the dimensions to something you like. And I also want to change the background, but for that we first have to create a sprite. Let's create a sprite that is going to be a representative of some kind of a grass texture. So I'm going to call this sprite tile grass. I also want to change the dimensions. We want to go ahead and use a 32 by 32 grid. I want to go ahead and edit the image and we're just gonna do something grassy, fill this all out, then take a brighter color and make a couple of these bad boys. Oh yeah, that's gonna be perfect, a perfect representation of grass. Now that we have that, let's go back into our room and switch to background. We're gonna choose our image, the grass texture, and we also want to tile it horizontally and vertically so that we have a nice textured room. So now that we have that, let's close the room for the time being and also we don't have to do anything else with the grass texture. It's time that we go ahead and create a couple more textures that we're gonna use in today's video. The most important texture is gonna be Sprite Player, of course. It's gonna act as our core object, just like in previous videos about Game Maker. What I want to do with this bad boy is make it a little bit taller than white. So we're gonna change the canvas to be 32 by 48. We're gonna hit apply and maybe we're gonna create that sprite. I'm gonna make it very simple and we're just gonna do, well, <laughs> that is the head. We have a couple of hair. It's just very important that I reach the limits of the sprite, just so that we can do proper collisions later on. Great, let's also draw a face, a perfect character. We're gonna close this off and I also want to change the collision mask. Now if we look at this, at the moment the collision mask is on top of everything, but what I want to do is either have precise collisions or maybe even better, uh, we're gonna do it manually. We're gonna do rectangle, but I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller than he actually is. So the character can overlap with objects just a tiny little bit. Before I forget to tell you, we should also take into consideration that the beginning of the mask should be at level 16 or pixel 16. We don't want to go above that so we can have a nice overlapping effect because 32 by 32 right here is the tile size. But I'm gonna decrease the collision just a little bit, something along these lines. Sprite player seems to be done. Let's go ahead and create yet another sprite which is going to be an object in the world. Uh, we could start with a rock or a tree or we just do both. Let's do both. We're gonna start with a world object which is rock. I'm gonna edit this to be uh, 32 by 32. This is not a tall object, so we can have it just the same size as a normal tile. Actually, the origin is something we should change in the player. Because this is larger than one tile size, I want to make sure that the feet are at the bottom of the tile. So if we go down 16 pixels and hit the OK button, you can see we are right here. And if we place the player in a tile, then this is gonna be what's counting. I will show you this effect later when we place it in the room. However, as for the rock, let's go ahead and edit this bad boy and I want to choose something dark gray and we might want to start right here and just make sure that we hit the borders. Every border at least once somewhere. Then we're gonna do the same thing as with the grass, beautiful. And then maybe take a brighter color and fill this out. This is going to be my rock that we can smash or get materials from. We will see what we are gonna do with it. Also with this bad boy, I want to make sure that we set up a collision mask. I'm gonna do it manually and I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller than the actual image. Mm, 
Maybe we go down to somewhere like that. This is where we are gonna bump against it, being the player. So I want to make sure we can run a little bit into it, but not too much. Okay, that seems about right. We can always adjust it later on. I'm gonna close this off and we're gonna create yet another sprite. As I said, we're gonna do sprite world tree. Let's go ahead and edit this. This is a tall texture. So this is a good example. We're gonna go with width of 32 and height of 48. There we go. Just like with the player. Now let's go ahead and edit this bad boy. Take something brownish. Oh, it's just the placeholder. I don't really care. Let's go ahead and start a tree. Oh, that is a little bit high. Oh, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be absolutely wow. I'm astonished. So let's do the top, making sure we hit all sides. All right, that seems about right. Well, this doesn't seem right. There we go. The roots look a little bit crappy, I have to admit. But what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Well, maybe I can fix it a little by giving it some shading. Uh, it's all right. It's gonna be fine, guys. So we got that in the joint. I'm also gonna set up a manual collision mask for that. And we want to make sure we start at uh, level 16 maximum. I'm even tempted to go down more, maybe to something like that. I'm gonna make this quite narrow and we go up to here. That seems to be a good collision mask for this one. Good. Just like with the other one, also we want to have the point of origin at pixel 16 so that we can place it within our 32 by 32 grid. Let's go ahead and make this possible. We only created the graphics by doing sprites. Now let's go ahead and create objects and assign these sprites. The first object is going to be my player, of course. Let's go ahead and give it a sprite. Oh man, my player is awesome. We want to have the same collision mask as the sprite. We want to make it visible. That's all good and fine. We're gonna do another object right away. This is going to be the object world rock. We're gonna have the corresponding sprite and we want to make this a solid object so our player can collide with it. Also, we want to go ahead and create yet another object which is object world tree. We're gonna connect this with the graphic and also it's a solid object using the same collision mask as the sprite. Good, now it's about time to create a couple of scripts, I would say. Well, maybe to make everything clear, we're gonna go ahead and open up the room and we want to make sure we are within the instances layer. Then we go to resources and we can spawn in the player, let's say in the center here, why the heck not? And you can see that it adjusts itself to be exactly at the bottom of the tile with the feet. And that's why we had to set the point of origin to 16, which is right here. So it's actually placing it at the top left corner of the tile, but it appears as though we are standing on the bottom corner. We're going to do the same thing with the tree and also those guys will be spawned in in a way like that. So let's spawn in a couple of trees uh, just to make sure that we can collide with these bad boys. And also what happens if we do something like that, that is going to be very interesting. You know, when they overlap, what are we gonna do about it? Okay, also I want to load in a couple of rocks, of course. Then maybe in the next episode we can take care of resource collection and inventory. Ah, let's not be too ambitious. But I now have an idea where I want to go with this, so it's much better. Okay, so we did set up our room. I started the game. This is how it looks right now. Nothing, of course, is happening, but it is as we expected, so that it's not too bad. Now it's time to create a couple of scripts. So what I want to do is go ahead and have a look into the object player. Right here we want to add a couple of events. The first event I'm gonna require is a create event. Events basically occur at certain points and execute certain actions right here. The create event of course is when the object is first created so everything in here is only going to be executed once. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and create a script. We're going to call this script global variables. I want to have as few global variables as possible but we might have to install a couple of them. Anyways we want to convert this script into a GM language so that we can type a little bit of code in it. I'm going to call this global variables, give it a nice title and we're first gonna start let's start with the room variables and then we're gonna do player variables the room variables um well for the time being we want to set room width maybe to 1280 room height to 720 and then i also want to set the room speed so we have a certain frames per second now we're gonna do 60 i think 
Good. As for the player, for the time being, we only have to set the player movement speed, basically. So let's do player movement speed. Yeah, that's a good variable. I'm gonna set this to a uh, 2, maybe. That seems to be good. So we're gonna move 2 pixels 60 times per second once we set it up. Now, I believe that is everything I need for the global variable, so we're gonna close this off, at least for today's episode. And of course we want to execute it right here in the create event. So let's go ahead and use this button and we're gonna execute a script, which is the global variables. Very good, very good. Now, what is going to be next? We need the player movement itself. So for that, I'm gonna do a step event. And here, I also want to execute the script. And of course, we first have to create the script. This is gonna be the player movement. So everything that has something to do with the player movement, we're gonna do in here. Player movement. And for now, that is just the basic movement. We did set that up in the previous episodes, but of course we're gonna go through it once again. We want to set up a keyboard check and we want to check a letter. The letter is uh, going to be D in order to move to the right. But also we want to check if a solid object is in the way. We do that by uh, typing place free, I believe, and we need an X and Y coordinate for that. So I want to check if we go to the right, x plus global dot player movement speed. So we want to go to that position, but first we check if it's free. Also we have to set the y coordinate, there we go. And if that is the case, if we hold down the button and the place is free, then we want to say x plus equals global dot player movement. So we really want to go there. Great, okay, let's copy this over four times for all the directions. We first want to move to the left with A and we want to do X minus and X minus here as well. Then we want to move down, which is not an X, that should be an S and for that we have to switch this of course. So it's gonna be Y plus global dot player movement speed. And also here we have to set Y. And last but not least, we have the W to move up. So we need this bad boy right there and it should be minus. And also here, Y minus. Great, so theoretically that should already do the trick. We want the player movement of course to be on the step event we set up right here. So let's go ahead and execute another script. And we want to do the player movement. Yeah, that is on the step event, very good. Let's go ahead and test the game. What we can do now is move the player around and also we can see that we are colliding with the objects right there. But we can also see other problems such as for instance here the trees are alright but right there we have a collision that doesn't make sense. The upper tree should be behind the lower tree. And also my player of course goes behind the trees where it doesn't make sense. I mean it makes sense if we look at the player right here. It goes behind the tree but then ah look at this. This just doesn't make sense here. So we basically want to change the depth of every object depending on its Y position. For the player we have to do this on the step event but for every other object we only have to do it once, once it's placed. So let's go ahead and set this up with yet another script. I'm gonna create this and we're gonna call it script, um, let's say adjust depth. Yes, and of course we want to change that. We want to code ourselves, adjust depth. And what do we have to do here? This is actually pretty easy. We are going to change the depth value of the object where the script is on and we want to change it depending on the Y level, the current Y level, times minus one. So the higher the level, the lower the depth. I think that's how you would say it, but, but you get my basic drift. And that's all we had to do for this, believe it or not. So we can actually make this very small here. And we want to make sure this is being executed on our step event here as well. So I'm gonna add another script. It's the adjust depth every single frame. As for the other objects, we only have to do it once. So we can choose the create event and also add this adjust depth. And since I've done that now, I'm actually gonna close the rock off. And we're gonna do the same thing with the world tree, create execute script, the adjust depth, and then close this off. And what we should be seeing is the correct depth for everything. For instance, these trees are now fixed. And if I move right there, we can see we are behind the tree. However, if I move right here, we are above the tree. 
Now it's very important for the collision masks. For instance, you can see the player is right here. This is where the collision mask of the tree starts. So right now, of course, we are pretty huge in contrast to the trees. Maybe we could make the trees even bigger, but you, you get the basic gist behind it. We are on the right track with this. So what could we do the next time? We could set up an automatic spawning system for the trees and the rocks to make it a little bit more intriguing. We could uh, add the ability to harvest. We could add the ability to add something to the inventory, though that is pretty much advanced already. But let me know what you are interested in and I'm looking forward to continue with the next tutorial. But other than that, thank you very much for watching, have a great time and see you in the next video. Bye bye.